Good morning. Good morning. Today we will be covering uh, viral infections, different various uh, viral infections of uh, skin. Uh, I'll be covering the uh, following topics. Uh, first, briefly giving an introduction about the various types of viruses and the common viruses which are affecting the skin and mucosa and the, and the pathogenesis of uh, the viral infections. And then we'll uh, classify the uh, viral infections of the skin and we'll give a brief, uh, brief outline uh, uh, outline of about viral infection, how they present and how they are uh, treated. So coming to the introduction, viruses are uh, self-limiting and benign nature. Uh, infections which are uh, self-limiting and benign nature, they are often associated with uh, morbid and life-threatening infections. Uh, so generally, they will be uh, of spherical, uh, spherical shape and with an average uh, with an average size of uh, seven micron. Uh, viruses can be seen by a light microscope and aggregated bodies inside the cytoplasm or nucleus of the host cells, which are known as inclusion bodies. Uh, inclusion bodies are uh, mainly intranuclear intra, uh, inter inclusion bodies, which can be seen with uh, herpes virus group and uh, human papilloma virus. And apart from that, uh, intracytoplasmic uh, inclusion bodies can be seen in the uh, pox virus group. Uh, viruses that cause infections in humans are basically of two kinds. Uh, either they can be DNA viruses or RNA viruses, or RNA viruses based on the uh, nuclear material which is the, uh, which is present in the particular virus. So coming for the classification of uh, in, uh, human viruses, there are five groups of viruses that can affect the skin and mucosa. Uh, most important, they can be again DNA or RNA viruses. Among the DNA viruses, we have herpes group of viruses, which includes herpes simplex virus one and two, varicella zoster virus, Epstein Barr virus, and cytomegaly virus. Mm -hmm. Second group will, will second group of DNA viruses will be papilloma virus group, which includes human papilloma virus, and third group of DNA viruses will be pox virus group, which includes uh, smallpox virus as well as uh, then the RNA among the RNA viruses um, among the uh, uh, molluscum um, molluscum contagion contagious virus uh, among the RNA viruses we have uh, the coronavirus group uh, which includes uh, Coxsackie uh, uh, Coxsackie virus group which causes hand foot and mouth disease and uh, retroviruses such as human uh, HIV virus. So, com some common uh, vir viruses affecting the skin and mucosa include uh, human papilloma virus, molluscum, molluscum contagious virus, smallpox virus, which is now eradicated, uh, herpes simplex virus 1 and 2, varicella zoster virus, among the RNA viruses, HIV virus, and Coxsackie virus. Uh, Follow, uh, coming to the pathogenesis of a viral infection, basically following the entry of virus into the host, a number of key stages resulting in infection occur. That is, there will be uh, there will be a cell injury or persistence followed by an immune response of the host. So stages stages uh, we can divide it as primary replication of the virus and spread of the virus to body tissues and replication of virus in the tissues. They will have an incubation period where they may be. Uh, where the you know, person may be asymptomatic or some, some viruses may produce some non-specific early symptoms, which is known as viral prodrome. Symptoms of viral infections caused by uh, tissue damage and systemic effects uh, following viral dissemination is known as viral. Uh, body develops the immune response for future protection from each particular virus based on, uh, by forming the memory cells. Coming for the uh, classification of viral infections of the skin, uh, uh, HPV infections are caused by human papilloma virus, molluscum contagion is caused by molluscum contagion virus, herpes simplex is caused by HSP1 and 2, varicella zoster that is triple pox or herpes zoster can be caused by varicella zoster virus. Then uh, there are some viral examples in predominantly seen in uh, pediatric age groups such as uh, measles and rubella. 
then apart from that, hand, foot, and mouth the disease can be caused by pox or two virus. Coming for the human first virus, which is the human papilloma virus infection. Human papilloma virus infection, basically, uh, they, it will present as intraepidermal tumors of the skin and mucosa, uh, uh, which is called secondary to uh, human papilloma virus. Uh, common uh, viral infections in school children and adults will be warts and verruque. They are very common in uh, children and adults in the school. And warts are caused by uh, warts are caused by human papilloma virus, which is a DNA virus. And uh, it, can, it is transmitted mainly by direct, indirect, or auto inoculation. Three modalities. And anogenital warts are usually sexually transmitted. The incubation period of uh, human papilloma virus is not uh, known yet. It may range anywhere from three months to several, several years. Uh, coming for the clinical features, uh, warts are characterized by solid, rough papule with a varicose surface. Surface will be varicose. It is, it is characterized by a uh, solid, rough papule with a varicose surface. Uh, the types of warts based on morphology, site affected, and mode of transmission, we can classify them into varicose vulgaris, which, are, which is nothing but common warts. They it will present with dome shaped papules with varicose hyperkeratotic surface. Uh, then there is Veruca plana or nothing but uh, flat warts. They are nothing but elevated, smooth, flat, flat topped papules. Uh, then there is a filiform or digital warts, which have a finger like uh, horny or multiple projections from the skin surface. Then there is palmar plantar warts, uh, which can be again superficial or mosaic, and the uh, it will have a it will it will have multiple capillary bleeding points. Uh, uh, on uh, horizontal compression, there will be pain which can be seen in these kind of wards. Horizontal compression. Uh, no bleeding or, or pain by vertical, uh, this thing. So, if you, you put vertical pressure, there won't be any uh, pain and bleeding. Whereas, if you put horizontal or lateral pressure, there will be pain in case of wards. Anogenital wards is uh, commonly uh, presents as condyloma accumulata which will be moist, fissuring, and uh, cauliflower-like lesions usually appear on the genitalia of the mucosal surface of the genitalia. One more um, uh, um, this thing type is epidermodysplasia verisiformis or EDB. It's a rare in inherited disorder of uh, defective uh, cell-mediated immunity to HPV serotype. Uh, it is characterized by two types of lesions. One is plain water like lesion, and uh, pityriasis versicolor like scaly mucosal lesions on the face, trunk, and extremities. And uh, there can be also oral and laryngeal papillomas, secondary to warts and HPV. Uh, complications uh, survey, uh, if it is present in the cervix, it can cause, uh, it can, it may lead to cervical carcinoma in situ or spinal cell carcinoma of the cervix. Uh, in, uh, uh, if it has to develop, it should uh, it will develop in long-standing anogenital wards. Giant condyloma accumulator can again transform into spinal cell carcinoma, which is known as uh, Pushke Lowenstein's uh, Lowenstein tumor uh, in case of HIV, and it is more common in patients receiving uh, immunosuppressive uh, drugs and with those with who are having immunodeficiency in states such as HIV. Uh, Epidermodysplasia verisiformis can lead to again, it can lead to Bowen's disease, which is nothing but in situ squamous cell carcinoma, or it can also cause invasive squamous cell carcinoma. So diagnosis mainly we can we should we diagnose uh, uh, warts by uh, H or HP infection by uh, clinical uh, examination. They have a characteristic appearance, and uh, if at all if we get a histology or biopsy done. We will get to see acanthosis, papillomatosis, hyperkeratosis, and vacuolated cells in the ramula layer. So, try treatment. Most warts are self limiting in nature, except for the non genital warts. Uh, usually, they will uh, dissolve in one to two years. Uh, uh, but we can always consider uh, giving a treatment for the, uh, for the patient uh, by giving uh, things such as uh, uh, keratolytic agents, for example. Uh, we have a 
salicylic acid plus lactic acid paint formulation, which can be used for the, the treatment. And we can also do chemical cauterization, chemical cauterization with the help of 50% uh, TCA uh, for common wards and filling form wards. 50% uh, TCA, which can increase up to even 100% uh, TCA, we can use for chemical cauterization of the uh, common wards. And uh, for anogenital wards, uh, we can use podophylline 20% in tincture as well. Or the in genital wards. One important thing is it's a, it's a contraindication in pregnancy. And the cryotherapy using the liquid nitrogen, or liquid uh, or the carbon dioxide or the liquid nitrous oxide, uh, we can do the cryotherapy, which is an effective treatment again. And we can also consider doing electrocautery, radio frequency, and other methods. And formalin soaps uh, can be used for uh, used with four to ten percent formalin concentration for plantar wards. Then apart from that, uh, we can also use uh, topical sensitizers and uh, system immune modulators uh, can be used um, uh, based upon the uh, used upon the this thing um, the, for the wards and extensive wards and epidermolysis forms uh, uh, like uh, can be given um, a course of isotretinoin which actually helps in uh, clearing them. So this is a case of filiform mod. You can see over the eye loop, you can see that there is a finger-like projection. There is a projection from growing outside the uh, outside from the uh, this thing, uh, skin surface. So this is a uh, filiform mod. Here we can see multiple filiform mods. There, there is a finger-like projection, uh, pointed uh, finger-like projection coming uh, from the surface of the skin uh, to the exterior. These are common wards. We can see this. There, there is a dome shaped uh, papule with a verical surface. Again, these are the plantar wards. Here we can see it is, uh, these lesions are nothing but uh, the, we can see multiple papules here, keratotic papules. But if we examine it, examine it closely, we will uh, see, uh, we will uh, get to see the multiple thrombose vessels or bleeding points. And uh, if we do a lateral pressure, horizontal pressure on these wards it will be painful. This is again an example of plantar wart. Here we can uh, much clearly see there are multiple thrombose vessels which are appearing black in nature. So if we put a lateral pressure on the lateral, lateral pressure on the uh, this particular wart, it will be very painful. Uh, these are nothing but flat wards. Here we can see uh, like these are nothing but uh, flat top uh, skin colored papules which are located prominent in the forehead. And whenever flat, uh, when a plane or flat words appear, they will appear in huge number. Uh, these are nothing but condyloma pigmenta over the genital surface, over the genitalia of, uh, of this particular patient. We can see there is a cauliflower like uh, uh, growth over the um, genitalia. Molluscum contagiosum is the next virus we are going to discuss. Molluscum contagiosum is a self-limiting infection and it has a classical complicated skin lesion. So based on that, we will be able to diagnose molluscum contagiosum. And uh, it, is, it has one characteristic feature which are known as molluscum bodies or intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies. Uh, basically, it is caused by a pox virus, um, mainly molluscum contagiosum some uh, virus type 1 and type 2 and it, it is transmitted either by direct inoculation, indirect inoculation, auto inoculation and is, and is also uh, transmissible through sexual growth. And incubation period of molluscum contagiosum is usually 2 to 8 weeks. Uh, it is common in children and uh, it is uh, definitely less common in uh, case of adults. So they will present with the asymptomatic, usually multiple discrete dome-shaped uh, pearly uh, milky white uh, papules, um, and they will be umbilicated. That means there will be a, there will be a central depression in these papules. It is commonly seen in face, trunk, abdomen, thighs, etc., and the linear lesion along the lines. That is the Kugner's phenomenon at the site of injury is also seen. So mainly what happens is, since it's a viral disease, if the patient uh, tends to scratch it, uh, scratch the lesion, 
then the virus will get inoculated along the line of scratch and it will lead to a linear it will the development of a linear lesion along the uh, at the place where at the site where the patient has scratched the lesion so this is known as Hubner's phenomenon if this happens due to auto inoculation of the virus from the existing lesion there is widespread eruptions there can be in case of immunosuppressed individuals such as HIV, uh, there can be widespread eruptions of Moluscum contagiosum. So if you see Moluscum contagiosum, which is very extensive, especially in an adult, you should always keep HIV infection as a uh, HIV infection in mind and we have to evaluate the patient. So diagnosis is uh, mainly clinical. It is a very easy diagnosis to make. Just placing the clinical picture now, we can make the diagnosis. A cheesy white material can be expressed on piercing the umbilicated center of the lesion. Uh, we can smear this, uh, we can smear and uh, we can develop the uh, intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies. They are also known as Henderson Patterson bodies or HP bodies. So, treatment if, uh, if it is only a few lesions, we may not uh, treat it also, it will uh, resolve spontaneously. Uh, if it is a little bit more and it is extensive, we can always consider uh, you know, the application of uh, topical cantharidine, maybe it will be more retinol or even uh, the salicylic acid and lactic acid paint. Uh, yeah. uh, apart from that, we can also do curettage of the lesions and we can also put TCA at the base of the uh, this thing after doing the curettage. And surgical uh, this thing, surgical treatment is also this thing available where we can use a, a white core needle or even a forceps and uh, express out the cheesy material which contains basically the viral particles. And one simple uh, treatment for uh, the for a case of almost contagion would be uh, applying 10% KOH uh, uh, at night for one week for a week to 10 days. And also, we can also use cryotherapy and electrodesiccation. The lesions are bothersome uh, and it is uh, very limited in this thing, number. So, this is a case of a monosome contagious. Here we can see dome shaped practice. You can see that in the center, there is a little bit of shininess or whitish uh, material which can be seen through the practice. And, uh, As a complication is not appreciated in this picture, but uh, here we can see there is uh, this thing. There is a central depression in the papule, uh, which is nothing but the umbilical umbilication of the uh, umbilications in the pap papules of molluscum contagiosum. Then herpes simplex viruses is the next uh, infection which we are going to see. It's one of the very common infection which can be seen with uh, uh, patients with. Uh, Patients will come to the skin injury. Uh, it is passed by two major antigenic types or types, in which is HSV type 1 and HSV type 2. And it is characterized by a primary episode, which is uh, having a systemic, uh, which is having systemic features such as fever and, and other systemic features such as myalgia. And the recurrent episodes generally are asymptomatic and it is due to the reactivation of the latent virus. So etiology, HSV uh, infection is caused basically by two types of viruses, HSV type 1 and type 2. HSV 1 uh, is, uh, is something which is related to the uh, oral, uh, and oral, or this thing, oral and uh, towards the up, up in this thing, upper trunk, that is this thing, towards the o, like, o, o, mucosal uh, lesions and cutaneous lesions around the oral cavity. And HSV2 is something which is related to genital herpes, but either of them can cause uh, either of them can cause uh, genital herpes as well as uh, this thing, uh, or of, uh, or of herpes. Uh, transmission and transmission of HSV is uh, mainly by droplet infection and also by direct direct contact. Incubation period of herpes simplex is very short; it can range from anywhere from three to five days. HSV infection has two phases. The first phase is uh, whenever there is a primary infection, uh, the virus is established in the dorsal root ganglion and uh, then it will reactivate from time to time. The second uh, phase is characterized by recurrent disease at the same site and HSV infection during the, uh, this thing, 
during the at the time of delivery can cause neonatal HSV infection. A neonatal HSV is a dermatological emergency and it can uh, lead to um, this life threatening neonatal disease. Um, it can also, one important thing about herpes simplex is it can also act as an entry point for HIV infection. That means uh, people who are having the genital herpes are more prone to uh, uh, stay, develop HIV infection if at all it can come in contact with. Lastly, the latent virus has a capacity to reactivate and replicate, causing the cutaneous disease. The hallmark of coalitions of herpes simplex virus are they will be a grouped uh, vesicles, uh, grouped vesicles, and sometimes it can be unrelated as well. So, clinical features primary HSV infection is quite severe. And it will have uh, multiple systemic symptoms such as fever, malaise, generalized lymphadenopathy. Whereas uh, classical lesions of herpes are good vesicles on erythema space, and later it can lead to formation of pustules, erosion, simple layers. HSV infection uh, can occur in infancy and childhood. HSV1 will cause predominantly, uh, it can cause in infancy and childhood, and HSV2 uh, infection mainly occurs in the puberty. Uh, recurrent herpetic infections due to the reactivation of virus from the dorsal ganglia are uh, uh, triggered basically by uh, by things such as trauma, infection, stress, menstruation, and uh, sometimes even excessive sun exposure can trigger episodes of herpetic infections. And the symptoms are usually mild uh, in case of recurrent infections and they differ from uh, the primary infection by the absence of constitutional symptoms and lymphadenopathy. Uh, HSV infection in no compromised and HIV patient is basically characterized by recurrent episodes and sometimes it can also lead to chronic ulceration and sometimes can also lead to disseminated lesion. Types of types of HIV, HSV and characteristics we have already seen it can be either primary HSV infection or a recurrent, recurrent HSV infection. Uh, among the cutaneous types, it can come as herpes labialis, which is commonly known as fever blisters, presents as group painful vesicles with crusting, usually on the lips. Herpetic gingivostomatitis can be seen predominantly in infants and children, presents with fever and malaise, and uh, child will refuse to eat. Uh, this is followed by painful vesicles, ulcerative, uh, ulcerative lesions, and also crusting in oral cavity. Keratofungi, herpetic keratoconjunctivitis is usually caused by HSV1. Uh, it can lead to corneal uh, ulcers, corneal opacity, and uh, sometimes even blindness. So it is, an, it is important to identify the keratoconjunctivitis of this thing. At an earlier stage, to prevent the, to prevent the possible uh, corneal opacity, some of the visual loss. Primary herpetic lesion can occur anywhere. More it is, it is more common on face and upper extremities. Uh, then apart from that, there is this entity called as caposiform varicelli, caposis variceliform eruption or eczema herpeticum. Uh, it is characterized by very disseminated, extensive, uh, multiple multiple punched out erosions and crusting. It is predominantly seen in people who are taking some immunosuppressants or have or the having some form of immunodeficiency in the body. So it's, an, it's again a dermatological emergency. Patient should be admitted here and has to be given acyclovir by uh, intravenous modality. Then genital virus, uh, in male it can present with urethritis, so pisuria sometimes, with group vesicles or erosions of the genitalia. Whereas in female it presents with widespread group vesicles and pain with ulceration of the labia, vagina, and uh, also vulva. It can also present with dysuria and also vaginal disturb. Disseminated herpes occurs mainly in immunocompromised patients. So, how do you diagnose a case of uh, herpes simplex? Um, usually, it is very simple. Based on the clinical picture itself, we can uh, uh, diagnose the condition by seeing uh, by seeing group vesicles at the sites of predilection. Sometimes people will also give history of recurrent lesion. 
and uh, we can get a simple zang smear done and zang smear will show multi nodular giants multi multi nuclear giants is mmg cells and we can also culture for hsv virus and we can also send skin biopsy uh, from the lesion and we can also send hsv pcr dna pcr to detect hsv dna in that rapid diagnostic kit so treatment antiviral treatment is not necessary if it is a mild case uh, commonly used drugs are uh, acyclovir valaciclovir and tamoxifen Uh, we can also advise uh, supporting therapy such as soaks, emollients, oral analgesics, and antibiotics. Oral antibiotics, acyclovir, pamcyclovir, and uh, valsiclovir can be given for uh, uh, severe in recurrent uh, recurrent infection and also for neonatal HSV infection. For primary episode, the acyclovir dose is four hundred mg three times a day for for seven days. Or a cycle of it, two hundred and fifty five times per day for five to seven days. In severe recurrent infection, more than six episodes, uh, a cycle of it can be given as a prophylactic dose, which will be four hundred and fifty twice daily for six to twelve months. Or we can also give it as two hundred and fifty twice daily for six to twelve months. So this is a case of herpes labialis. We can see multiple root vesicles present on the lower limb. This is a case of herpes labialis disease again, which is a little bit extensive in this patient. We can see multiple root vesicles seen on both upper as well as lower limb. It's possible that it may be a primary infection. Recurrent infection is will usually be milder than the primary infection. Next set of uh, viral infections that we are going to discuss will be the viral infections caused due to varicella zoster virus. Varicella is a varicella or chicken pox is a primary infection for for the varicella zoster virus in a non-immune host. Especially, usually it will be a child, and it can happen in adults as a primary infection as well. Then, herpes zoster will be will happen due to reactivation of the latent infection, will be partially immune host. So, etiology is nothing but a double-stranded DNA virus known as varicella zoster virus. Ninety percent of the infections will occur in children less than ten years, and uh, if at all if, if it happens in the adult, they have a higher rate of mortality. Uh, primarily, uh, varicella zoster virus infections are known to occur in uh, uh, during the winter and also during the spring season. Uh, during the uh, winter and also during spring season, uh, it is a highly contagious disease and it is transmitted to droplets or vesicula. Incubation period of varicella zoster virus is generally about two weeks, ten to fourteen days. Then, apart from that, uh, patients uh, infect patient is infectious one to two weeks two days before the onset of the virus and is infective up to about um, uh, one week of the onset of, uh, after the onset until all the lesions are clustered out. If there are any active vesicles or uh, papules, then then uh, the lesion is on that. Uh, it is still infective. If it is, uh, if all the lesions have formed crusting or scabbing, then the uh, patient will become non-infective. Coming for the clinical feature, uh, skin rash is basically it can have a uh, low-grade fever and malaise as a prolong, and this will be followed by drops of papules that form vesicles on epidermal space. That is dew drop on. Those metal appearance. This is a characteristic thing. So they, this will uh, appear initially on the trunk, that is the centripetal distribution, and then spread to the face and extremities. So it's very important. It has a centripetal spread. Appearance will be primarily but initially on the trunk. Later it spreads to face and the extremities. Vesicles eventually it will become complicated and it will form a crust and it heals, uh, forming new lesions in the skin. These crops of lesions seen in different stages of evolution with centripetal distribution. Uh, like the thing is, like there are multiple uh, stages of evolution or different stages of evolution uh, so seen in uh, the same same patient, patient. That is one clue towards the diagnosis of chicken pox. Then uh, mucosal lesion may mainly can uh, happen in oral cavity. Uh, uneventful healing will happen uh, usually by uh, 
for healing the huge layer cluster two weeks and varicella in adults can lead to extensive involvement and also the chances of systemic complications of varicella so what are the complications which can be expected in a case of chickenpox uh, we can expect to see uh, secondary skin infections pneumonia uh, encephalitis otitis media and uh, if at all if it happens in the pregnancy especially in the first two trimesters trimesters it can cause congenital varicella syndrome ray syndrome is one thing which is common in children uh, secondary secondary to ingestion of aspirin in case of uh, chicken pox so these are the complications which can be expected uh, diagnosis uh, mainly the clinical diagnosis is sufficient and the zang test can uh, confirm the diagnosis as well so what we are going to see is similar to herpes syndrome we are going to see a multi-nucleate child cells uh, then uh, uh, we can also consider doing culture for the varicella zoster virus we can do immunofluorescence skin biopsy as well as uh, dna pcr for varicella zoster virus uh, we are going to treat in case of children like we can just treat it by symptomatic uh, uh, treatment that is in less than 12 years in varicella is in less than 12 years of uh, age then you don't have we don't have to give acyclovir acyclovir and we can just treat by symptomatic symptomatic intervention please for itching and pain in the period we can treat pruritus can be relieved by oral antihistamine or uh, supplemented with a calamine lotion uh, antibiotics may be given for secondary infections and oral acyclovir is usually not given for uncomplicated varicella in children so less than 12 years of old 12 years of age if it is an uncomplicated varicella oral acyclovir is not indicated uh, it can be given in uh, oral acyclovir should be given for patients uh, who are having varicella in adult age or adolescent age group that is beyond 12 years of age uh, and especially for severe conditions we have to give acyclovir so in adults at adolescents more than 12 years of age, we have to give a cyclovir at a dose of 800 mg 5 times a day for 7 days. In children and uh, adolescents, uh, 20 mg per kg per day can be given 4 to 6 times per day for, uh, per day for 5 days. Severe cases of uh, in severe cases, IV cyclovir may be given and the supporting care should be done in hospital or for admitting the patient. So, in order for the prophylaxis, we can also consider giving the varicella zoster immunoglobulin. So, who are all the indications for varicella zoster immunoglobulin? One is that people with high risk, such as people who have a leukemia, people having lymphoma, and uh, people uh, with the immunocompromised children, immunocompromised children, and also in a newborn whose mother developed chickenpox five days before delivery or within two days after delivery. One important thing about uh, using the prophylactic vaccine as a no problem is it has to be given within 72 hours of exposure to the chickenpox patient. So, this is the clinical picture which is showing the um, multiple epimatous uh, papules and a few recycles. Some are already formed in the So, we can see the lesions are in different stages of evolution. Here, we can see it is, uh, it is just an epimatous papule here. Later, it has progressed to an epimatous papule, and later it will progress to a full blown vesicle, which might, which might later turn turbid and later be formation of a first floor, later rupture and form a crust and form crust in the stab. So, here we can see this is the view of the uh, hospital appearance. This hospital is the epimatous uh, skin, which is there in the background, and new drop will be the vesicles which can be seen. Uh, the second uh, viral infection which can be seen uh, as the second clinical manifestation seen with the varicella zoster virus is herpes zoster. Basically, it presents with a root vesicle along a dermatomal distribution with excruciating segmental pain. So, basically, what happens is after the primary varicella, varicella zoster virus infection, that is, after the stigma box. Uh, the virus will not go away completely. It will stay in the dorsal root area after an attack of varicella uh, that leads to herpes zoster. So after an attack, it will stay in the uh, uh, dorsal root area 
and whenever the body sensitivity goes down, for example, uh, in age or whenever there is stress, fever, radiation therapy, immunosuppression such as HIV, lymphoblastic leukemia, or people who are taking immunosuppressive drugs, or people with diabetes. So in these kind of patients, the virus will get reactivated from time to time, and it will travel in the uh, this thing in the travel back to the cell now to cause the infection, which is nothing but herpes zoster. Um, Sometimes no apparent uh, causes can be found here, and mostly it occurs after 40 years of age, and it is uncommon in children. Uh, clinical feature again, pain, paresthesia in a dermatomal distribution three to four days prior to the eruption. Uh, we can see this, uh, this thing, prodrome, you know, which is present in, presented by, by pain or paresthesia in the dermatome, and uh, it is followed by unilateral wound vesicle. Cycles with dermatomes within the dermatomes. These vesicles become pustules and crusted. Uh, healing with the uh, scar occur, uh, healing with scar occurs within two to three, three weeks. An option is accompanied by burning type of pain along with sharp knife like pain. Uh, usually, most common uh, area affected by the thoracic region and also ophthalmic region of the trigeminal region and the cervical and spinal nerves. Uh, these are the uh, frequently affected uh, dermatomes. In elderly and HIV patients, often the condition of trigeminal nerve is actually quite common. Arthrososter in HIV patients is characterized by severe pre-herpetic and post-herpetic neuralgia and multidermatomal involvement, cranial nerve affection, dissemination, and systemic complications. So, the complications seen with the uh, arthrososter infection include post herpetic neuralgia or the persisting pain along the uh, elderly. And apart from that, uh, apart from post herpetic neuralgia, there can also be the risk of secondary bacterial infection, scarring and persistent local anesthesia, Ramsey Hunt syndrome, where there is involvement of facial nerve and genitalia ganglia, ganglia causing facial palsy. There can be vesicles on ear canal and severe earache. You know, there can be keratitis, corneal ulcers, scarring, and blindness. There can be motor paralysis, rarely, and there can be Hutchinson's cell. Hutchinson's cell is nothing but involvement of mesociliary fracture from trigeminal nerve, uh, in which there will be lesions on the nasal tube. So, this uh, one important thing about Hutchinson's cell is it has no predilection for ophthalmic complications. So diagnosis, basically it's a clinical diagnosis. We can also do a science study to see the utility of the answer. And we can also consider doing culture and immunoprocess test. In treatment, mild cases, we can do supportive therapy with analgesics and antibiotics. For severe cases, we can uh, consider giving the SIQ with 5 times a day for 75 days. So this should be, one important thing is it should be started within 48 hours of so we should start within two days of uh, the the example with patent NG five times a day for seventy five days. Alternatively, we can also give fam fam cycle with five NG three times per day, or well cycle with one gram three times per day for one week. So first comment in case of example uh, with persistent cases. For post herpetic neuralgia, we have multiple uh, treatment options here. One is uh, palliative case is often. Uh, so, palliative, palliative care is all that is necessary here. Yeah. Uh, um, this thing, capsaicin uh, cream application, which acts as a local irritant, capsaicin can be given. Apart from that, there are drugs such as carbapentin, beta-bulin, sodium valproate, or carbamazepin, which can relieve pain and post neuralgia. Also, there has been, uh, we can also give uh, tricyclic antidepressants, such as amitriptyline, which, which might also help here. And apart from that, um, for severe case with cranial nerve involvement, tapering course of steroids can be given. If at all, if there is cranial nerve tapering course of steroids, especially for 10 days, we have to give steroids. Uh, live attenuated by viral vaccine can be used in healthy children as prophylaxis. Varicella zoster immune blocking therapy is indicated for high risk in patients. So, this is a case of. Uh, Resource of time because we can see that uh, there is involvement of the 
So other viral in, uh, examples which can be seen apart from these uh, these uh, important infections in group, uh, apart from uh, these important infections which have been discussed, it can all, it, uh, there are some viral examples which can be seen in predominantly in, uh, predominantly in children, which can present with uh, clinical manifestations uh, of skin. So the, they include measles, germ measles, eczema infectious. So one TD we will consider here is will be interacreactions, that is which can be moderately compounded reactions. Then apart from that, uh, one important thing is uh, um, like measles will usually will uh, present uh, with, with flu, flu like program and with an incubation uh, period of 8 to 12 days. You can see coffee spots in the oral mucosa just before the exam, the skin exam will appear and last two to last two to four days. Rash begins on fourth or fifth day of fever, and it will present with pinkish macules and papules that plant. Rash fades after five days. German measles or rubella will have an incubation period of 30 to 18 days. Up to 50% infections are self-clinical there, and rash will begin on face and spread downwards. Tender retroarticular and symptoms can be seen. And then one more important uh, skin infection, skin viral skin infection is. Uh, Hand, foot, and mouth disease. Uh, it's a self limiting infection which is caused by Coxic virus A16 and Enterovirus 71. Coxsackie virus A16 and Enterovirus 71. It spreads through, uh, spreads through direct contact with saliva or with feces of uh, infected person. Uh, it occurs in uh, uh, preschool children predominantly in summer and monsoon, and it will present with five to six days of uh, fever and malaise. Clinically, you can see a vesicular rash, which is predominantly the perioral and nacre distribution that is involved in the palms and soles. Often, uh, uh, it can also affect the gluteal region as well as the flexures. Uh, oral lesions are uh, first to appear in, and they will be painful, which will uh, resemble the aphthous ulcers. Then, uh, skin lesions will appear as small erythematous macules, which turn into blister with uh, the rash is uh, will spontaneously disappear, disappear within seven, seven days of the appearance of this thing. So treatment, there is no particular uh, treatment for it only we found it will uh, resolve within seven days. So most important thing is we can just give symptomatic direct treatment. So thank you.